Hello, everybody. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about how to learn a foreign language. To be exact, uh, how to learn Mandarin uh, efficiently. Well, uh, I myself is a translation of language professional. I learned English uh, for many years. Uh, I believe that as a language professional, I actually do not have much talent in language. I cannot uh, do many things other people do in language. Uh, you know, if you are really good, you can imitate, like you can learn how the bird sings, how the dog barks, and uh, how the cat mm, meows, but I cannot. On the other hand, uh, for your language, I'm just an ordinary person. I'm not a polyglot, not like other people. But what I'm uh, probably a little bit better than others is in philosophy. I see things differently. I even venture to create my own system. I believe if you truly know what you are doing, and when you learn philosophy well, or you know what you are doing, as I suppose I, I am, you see things differently. So I'm going to introduce my theory of learning a foreign language. Uh, but that's a long, uh, winded, and deep, a uh, lot of things that uh, probably many people don't want to hear. But they do want to learn to know how you learn language efficiently. I watch many talks in the YouTube, and I see the, all the theories like the behaviorism from Skinner, uh, the universal language uh, grammar thing from Chomsky and uh, uh, the cognitive side from uh, PRA and uh, so many theories. But uh, still, uh, in anybody, if he teaches or learn a foreign language, knows that uh, all those things are not very effective so far. Uh, not be implemented, or I don't know what the, what the reason for that, but anyway, the results are still doubtful. So, uh, before I introduce my theory, my theory is called Instant College Language Learning. Uh, I believe most people just want to say, well, I'm not a theoretical person. I just tell me what you, what's the most you believe the most effective or efficient way of learning. So think about that. I produce the ten rules to learn a foreign language, especially if you are like me, uh, going from the uh, both big language group like uh, Sino-Tibetan language to Indo-European language, or vice versa. Uh, this is uh, for that reason. And also, uh, Chinese is believed to be the one of the most difficult language, along with the Arabic, uh, Japanese, or Korean, and uh, which requires 2,200 hours to study, according to the uh, statistics. So, I just gave you 10 rules. In the future, if you are interested in why, how did you produce the 10 rules? Uh, uh, you can listen to my theory. But now just 10 rules uh, for you to learn Mandarin uh, fast and uh, see uh, if they are effective to you. And to me, it's very effective. And uh, But I talk much longer than that because at the beginning uh, or for a pretty long time, I don't know what's uh, better way uh, to learn a foreign language myself. So, okay, what are the 10 rules for learn for speaking Mandarin fluently? Number one, learn PE well. 
make absolutely sure your pronunciation accurate. I feel it's the same as if you learn English from the Chinese side. Make sure your pronunciation, the alphabets or the phonetics, you pronounce it accurate. That's a problem 99% of people face in future because the sound, the vowels and the consonants, they sometimes sound familiar, uh, close uh, from P to uh, English uh, phonetics, they are close, but the exact position inside your mouth, the organs, that point is a little bit different because of that difference. When you pronounce it, it make a big difference. You either not clear or not correct. And then you hate it there once, probably correct, you believe you got it, but it won't stay there. So you need to consolidate. So make absolutely sure your opinion is accurate. Absolutely, that's the word, okay? Uh, number two, to start with, memorize 100 Chinese characters. Because if you don't know any Chinese characters, you cannot do anything. And just learn some Chinese characters, memorize them. 100 not difficult. Some people can remember it in one day, right? Well, if you take a few days, that's OK, too. So, but make sure you first start with the 100 Chinese characters, OK? All right, number three. After you got the 100 Chinese characters, Search any Chinese material for reading. Okay. These reading readings is not ordinary reading, like any pe other people talking about reading silently. I want you to read it aloud with a sound. There's many purpose in this doing so. Okay. But in this material, you have to make sure 95% of the words you understand. Okay? As long uh, you go along down the road, you increase your vocabulary, you can read more and more, you have more and more uh, materials. Uh, but at the beginning, it's uh, very hard because you have limited, you have very limited, 100 words, all right? But that is still a lot of uh, materials uh, you can find with uh, 100 words, you can understand. But make sure the new word won't be in the C, 5%, all right? That is uh, less than 10, 10 words, the new words of five, all right? Make sure so that you, when you read it, you can understand it. That's uh, very important. Okay, next, find a quiet place. You can read the material aloud. When you are reading it with a pen or pencil in your hands to make sure when you come across a new word or phrase or even a sentence, you mark it, underline it, mark it without stopping, without looking at the dictionary. But guess what it is. Just guess it. See if you can connect the meaning going forward. So guess it. If you cannot guess it, you don't know next one and next one. You guess and guess, you cannot go on. Forget it. Forget this material. Pick up a new one, all right? Leave that one for later use. So do it this way. If you understand, the guess is correct, you can go along with it, then do it, all right? But make sure, don't leave it there because you will forget. Leave it in the market and come back to it later, all right? That's a very important thing. Uh, the important thing is never stop in the middle because when you stop, when you check a dictionary for that word or phrase or sentence, that will spoil your reading interest. After a few times, you won't be able to continue anymore. 
the continuation of reading aloud is a very important, very important. It informs the meaning. It gives you the sense how to learn the language. It's like your stomach. You don't know it's a function, you see the food, right? And it will support your life, give you nutrition. But why? How did they do it? You, you don't know. Probably you need to know. Well, for language, it's the same thing. I know something happening there, and I have my theory. But for the moment, as you, the learner, do not need to know. Just do it this way. You will benefit immensely later, OK? All right. Number five, after reading, let's say for a long time, one hour, two hours, depending on you, you don't want to read anymore. What do you do? Go back, check the meaning in the dictionary, and remember how they are used in the book. If you can recall how you guessed in the book between the lines, the meaning, all right? Then write down, jot down the new words in your little book of notes and try to remember them next time. Then go back to step two and repeat for new materials. Pick up a new one. Don't repeat. If you understand it, don't repeat. Don't repeat. I stress this because many people think repetition is good for learning a language. Well, it is. All roads lead to Rome. In many other ways, you can learn the foreign language, but you want the most efficient as an adult, right? To learn it fast. So you don't have time to repeat, all right? Go for your meaning. That's a key, all right? So do this this way. Every time you increase a few new words and find new materials, don't repeat. Treat all other media of learning as exams. Talking to native speaker, watch TV, listening, see movies, etc., as an examination to your learning to see the results. You never depend on them. You don't learn things make substantial progress because of those things, all right? You can try, you can test yourself, but testing is not learning, all right? Remember this. Number seven, so this, you will build up a Mandarin wall in your head, all right? To prevent what? Like the Chinese long wall to prevent what? The enemy coming into the head. Who is the enemy? Your native tongue, that is English. They will take over your thought all the time to destroy the signal system, that is new language. You want to prevent it. Build the wall of the Chinese in your head. Not to think in English, that's crucial. All right, if you realize this, all other things are not important. Like talking to natives, going to abroad, uh, going to the native uh, language speaking country like China, not necessary. Just build a wall in your head. That's very important. It's crucial. So this is a basic concept to connecting all the dots. All the links. All right. Number eight, never memorize sentences. You have it? I tried many times when I was young, when I was learning, and they waste a lot of time. Trying to memorize sentences is a waste of time. Anything you do, remember, you are learning the language like a baby does. All right, baby never repeat sentences in learning. What a baby does, remember that, except take off the time the baby is sleeping, crying, eating, bathing. What's some crucial message 
between baby and the parents or other people, exchanging information, exchanging the meaning. How sec, how little time each day for the baby. But he or she as a baby can learn so fast. Before five years old, that they can just blah blah anything, right? Where the trick, the meaning. So when you repeat, you don't have meaning first in your mind. Meaning, meaning, meaning. Only there's a meaning. You learn the new words. That's it. That is a crucial because in your head, there's a controller which connects everything. All right. Remember this. Never memorize sentences. Number nine. Never memorize conversation. A lot of people tell you memorize conversation. Waste of time. Don't do it. All right. I suggest when you go over conversation in any material, just go all once for all. That's in English. There's 900 sentences from, uh, I think, um, American English, uh, uh, in the, the British as a lingua form. And that, that's all. You just go through it. Never try to memorize. If you spend a lot of time on that, memorize and you keep them, you are wasting your time because they don't have any meaning anymore the second time. Don't make it even more time, all right? Longer time, not necessary, all right? And the last one, number 10, never practice speaking with another language learner. That's a sound pretty, pretty hostile to other people, right? But that's a way to prevent mistakes, to prevent wasting time. All right, so all those 10 points, you should feel progress in less, in less than a week. Every two or three days, you should feel so. I did when I was training. When I feel grouping along this way to feel it, I did. Every two or three days, there's a difference. If you don't, there's something wrong with your method. Go back to check it. Remember that. All right. So basically, this long process of learning a foreign language, some people say six months, some people say two years, some think I'll say five years. To be fluent, I believe in less than two years, you can do that. If your method is correct, you don't waste a lot of time. But at least the 60, 80% of time you wasted. You didn't get the part that is the meaning. When I was a student, the teacher told me an uh, English, a British lady who knows 800 words only can function well in the society. And um, a lot of Chinese students come to America, they pass TOEFL, GRE, GMAT, you know, tens of thousand words they memorize. But they quit the university the next year. Like, uh, I think there's a statistics, and uh, like uh, uh, under 1,000 students were of, uh, uh, quitting university because they cannot talk to the uh, uh, local students in group uh, with the professors. So you may wonder, what's the reason? Why? They know so many words, they know the grammar so well, they pass the stems. Of course, they must know grammar, right? So what's the problem? The problem is the controller. I call it a controller. The connection between words, rules, grammar, and uh, the meaning. They don't have the training of meaning. That is a controller. That is a symbol, the language, the concept. So these 10 rules to make sure you train your controller. That controls the connection part of symbols, words, grammars, even logic. All right? That way you will learn fastest. 
the most efficient way. When you get the basic of it, when you are good, when you are fluent, when you're speaking, you basically open a new horizon in your life. You will feel quite different. It's an enlightenment time. You can go wherever, whatever you do or you go. All right? You can study deeper in writing, in reading, in culture, and many other things. You pass this stage of uh, fluent in your speaking. So, to summarize, talking fluently in a foreign language here, either in English or Mandarin, it's not to depend on talking to other people, or talking to anybody or to native speaker. It's depend on reading yourself, train your, train your brain with your own words, sound, listening, everything, all right? So today, I'm going to stop here. If you have any question, drop it down. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.